in the last week, I have, I have spoken to somebody who worked um, in great detail in the Situation Room and asked them these questions because I wanted to know. Tell me what it would be like in this situation. Tell me. You've been there. You've lived it. Tell me what it is. Without a shadow of a doubt, the President of the United States knew if he didn't, then you've got a bigger problem because the president is not informed. The president has people doing things and he's not involved, which may be a possibility, quite honestly, if you believe these. And I never did. But if you believe these people on um, on uh, Osama bin Laden, there were reports out there that said he didn't even make the decision. Finally, Hillary Clinton just stepped in and said, do it. Now, I don't believe that. But if the president didn't know, it means nobody's informing him. Yeah. But at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, he's got Leon Panetta in the Oval Office. That's the Secretary of Defense. And with the amount of, you know, just speaking off from my opinion here, but the, with the amount of information that we've acquired in the last week or two, not only from reporting but also from sources that we have, it's time to stop giving him this out that he didn't know. He knew. He knew 100% he knew. It would be impossible for him not to know. They chose not to do anything. Now, you tell me, you tell me, the only one that could have authorized special forces going in is the President of the United States. The President of the United States. But that would require Leon Panetta and the Secretary of State going into the President and saying, Mr. President, Mr. President, people are dying right now. Please, we can go in, launch launch if he was not given that opportunity then again people's heads need to roll and the president needs to be the president and say i'm firing all of these people but the president of the united states is the one who makes the decision launch send them in he did not if he didn't know what was going on heads need to roll if he did know what's going on it's his fault and i i got news for you there is no way conceivable, and if, please, please share this with your neighbors that are on the fence. If the president didn't know, we have a bigger problem. Because this guy has run a White House and a military and a State Department so out of control that no one thinks they need to report to the president of the United States when an embassy is under attack. If he, if he claims that he didn't have any of the information that I now have sitting, redacted, sitting on my desk right now, that shows what was happening in real time that was handed to the Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, and the Situation Room, if he says he didn't have that information, he's either lying or you need to get, demand a list of the people who are, or are fired because of it. Go ahead, stop it. Stop being so forgiving. You keep making these exceptions. Well, if he didn't know, blah, blah, blah. He did know. Oh, yeah. it, with the amount of information you have, you know it's that it's impossible that for that situation to develop without him knowing about it. You know he knows it. Stop Stop being so forgiving. You're, you're going too far in trying to act like Mr. Fair Guy here. You're being fair because you have information that makes it impossible for this guy to have not known. He knew. Period. Mm-hmm. He knew. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, may, he was making the calls. What have we turned into? What have we turned into? What have, what have we turned? We have four people. How how can the president? I don't even I don't even understand somebody like this. You have, you've hired that ambassador. You've hired him. That's the guy you you chose. You said, Chris Stevens, you go, you go in there. The CIA guys he didn't know, but the ambassador he did know. You go in. The guy begs you for weeks, please, please, something's going on. Please, they're targeting me. You don't do anything. Then when it's targeted, because maybe you're so arrogant, you say, you know what, nothing's going to happen. It's September 11th. I've got it all under control. And then when something happens and your military is there and you can do something to save the man that you pointed out and said, you go in our name, you go stand there. And then he does nothing. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. That's not America. That's not who we are. That's not the way we treat Americans. This is a voluntary system. This is something that we say, I believe in it. I want to do it. 
You don't just grab somebody up and, and throw them in a school and make them the ambassador from birth like in communist countries. These are people who are volunteering. And the president is the last, the, the guy who says, we're not going to leave a single person behind. We won't leave our people behind. My gosh. What have we turned into? If we don't turn this corner, America, we will not. We will become a force, a global, terrifying force for evil. It's not just our destruction. We're talking about the destruction of our souls. You can't be this kind of a person or a country. You can't. We didn't want to look at ghost planing and everything else. You're talking about American citizens going in and saying, we, we're trying to do the right thing here. Can you imagine? You imagine being the guy who had the laser pointer. And he's like, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I'm not asking you to send a troop in. I'm asking you to send, I'm asking you to send one robotic plane in. One. And I can take them out and I'll live and so will everybody else. I'm asking for one robotic plane. And you don't send it? How these guys, what these guys, what these Navy SEALs had to be thinking in their own head. What have I sacrificed for? What do we even mean? Wow. I've never seen anything like it. Today officially is the day that I no longer recognize my country.